I'm Matt, I'm a professional magician and I want to teach you some of the best magic tricks you can learn to amaze your friends, family and colleagues. I've been doing these classes now for over 10 years. I do them as one-to-one -one individual private classes, but I also do amazing team building activities and community group activities as well. I teach you a few tricks that are beyond the sort of really simple grammarly type tricks of where they taught you the three pounds of seven cards and all that sort of stuff that everyone does down the pub. These tricks are ones that you can use, you can impress your friends and they look really, really good. They go great online if you want to do something over a conference call, but they also go fantastic one-to-one -one in person. You can learn these tricks by either booking for a private event or you can go to my website, letterboxmagic.com. On there you can find the class in full and you can learn it and have access to it for as long as you like. Book the Magic Masterclass as part of your next team building activity, event, or as a private one-to-one -one lesson. Get in touch by visiting matthewjmagic.co.uk and clicking on Masterclasses under the Services section. See you soon.
doing some magic trick filming. I'm basically teaching magic tricks one to one live over Zoom, which is a kind of fancy FaceTime. If you want to get involved and learn some tricks, let me know. You can do that at Facebook. You can go to the Magic Match on our Facebook, or you can contact me at Letterbox Magic on Facebook as well. Or you can get me through my website, which is themagicmatchshow.co.uk. Whatever you want to do, give me a shout. We'll teach you some tricks. About a 20 minute lesson or so, you can go away, learn them tricks, and come back and show me how you're doing it a bit later on. Good to see you, good to learn some tricks with you, and uh, yeah, stay safe, guys. A bit scary at the minute, but it'll be all good, I promise. I'm on time! I'm on time! This is one of the first weeks I've ever been on time. I've got loads of time. Uh, I was supposed to have a lesson just now and they didn't turn up on Zoom. They, must have, they just forgot, so it's okay. But I did that another time, so that meant I was supposed, before this I was doing a lesson and then obviously um, they didn't turn up. So um, I had loads of time to get this sorted today. So we're all on time, all shared and all that sort of jazz. Uh, so get yourselves on, say hello so I can see you. Um, I can see who's watching. I've got a couple of people watching with me. I'll turn that down a tiny bit because I'm peeking there on my microphone. Um, so I've got quite a few on so far so graham hi graham hi mum my mum's on as well we are on our new time this week of um five o'clock so i'm now going to do this at five o'clock on a friday because it is uh obviously that loads of people are back to school and that means that kids can't watch it on a friday because it's two o'clock frank's staring at me from the house it's sad it's warmer in the house, so she's come back to bed. Um, yeah, so they can't watch me live on a Friday. Hi, George, as well. Thank you for joining us. Hi, hi, hi. Um, so, yeah, that's why we're doing it at 5 o'clock now on a Friday. Um, so that's going to be doing uh, every week now on a Friday. So, hi, Mum. My Mum's there as well. You're back this week, Mum. That was fine. We missed you last week. So there we go. Put that up on the screen. If you do say hi, please do mention your kids' names as well if you're watching with your kids. So I can mention them out on here. Uh, give us a hello so I know who you are. And then I can say hi as well. Uh, this week is a coin trick so you need a coin what i'm doing is i'm actually gonna do a couple of coin tricks this week show you a couple of techniques that i like um and a few tricks that you might like you might not like some with very degree oh, i've got some loves and likes as well that helps that's really good yeah so i forgot to say about those there all the little ones on the bottom you click the love like smiley bits and stuff like that uh so oh hang on a minute I'm still logged on as School Magicians, so I'm currently liking it as School Magicians. Ah, oh, fair enough. Okay. Um, yeah, so pop on, do say hello, and then I know who you are. Share this feed, all that sort of jazz. Click the like and share button, which is down the bottom there, in the bottom corner. That really helps me out, uh, that side, or wherever it is, whichever side it is. Uh, and if you don't like the Magic Match show already, like that page. Okay, let's crack on. I'll show you this trick. And the first trick that I'm going to show you uses a 10 pence piece. It is a silver coin, so you can see it. Okay, I'm going to use this shiny, nice and shiny 10 pence piece. Uh, you get a good close up look at that. Uh, and then you're going to show you the hand empty as well. Okay. Now watch carefully. If I rub the ten pence piece, I'm going to give it a little rub like this. Give the ten pence piece a rub. Who's that? That's oh, there's a couple of people saying hello. Uh, hey, Kaylee as well said hello. I'll just change that whilst we're doing the reveal, and you can see that as well. So, hi, Kaylee. How are you? Hope you're well. Thank you for all your work during this in the NHS as well. Mark. Hi, Mark. Uh, watching with um, who we got? 
uh, Shamila, Lauren and Skylar. Three of you. Excellent work. And there we go. And it's changed into a two pence piece right before your eyes just from rubbing it just like that. And um, then we'll do the same thing again. I'll show you, show your hand empty as well. Uh, one more time. You rub it across in front again, and this time we give it a good old rub. This time, hopefully, the bit of luck that uh, ten pence piece should change into a so two pence changes back into a ten pence piece, uh, and then you can show the coin as well, and then you can show your hands and everything empty. All right. So this is a really simple colour changing coin. What's up, Frank? Frank's just barking at the Frank. Enough. He's just barking at the at the gate. Okay. Um, Frank can come say hi. Actually, in a minute, he's not said hi for a while. Uh, yeah. So it is a copper silver um, transposition. All right. Sorry, I got distracted halfway through uh, that. And also because of the way that I'm sat and come close to the camera, I've now dropped my other coin on the floor. Uh, right. So for this trick, you need a copper coin and a silver coin. I'm using a ten pence piece. You tell him, Frank. I'm using a ten pence piece and a two pence piece because um, that's what we have here in the UK. Um, my 10 pence piece is, actually you know what, I'm going to show you something here that's quite cool with a 5p as well. Uh, I'll put that in there and we might even play spin off all later as a special treat. Uh, okay, um, so let's change uh, low power mode and then I'll take that off so we can't see it. And let's show you what we're doing with this 10 pence piece. So, the first thing I showed you was the 10p like this and I showed you the 10 pence piece just like that. I'll put you up on there actually, I, didn't, I don't know if I did, so I didn't do that for you Mark. Uh, Shamila, Lauren and Sky as well. Shamila, am I saying that right? I think I am. Shamila? Sh I hope so. Uh, so you show the 10 pence piece, this looks better in real life because you can see it a lot easier here because of the shiny lights. Uh, you can't quite tell the difference, it's not as great a transposition between the two. Frank, that's enough buddy. Right. I have to go get him in a minute. Uh, right, so this is the 2p, this is the 10p. I'm showing the 10p to start off with, and I'm showing it like this, and I'm quite good with my angles because my 2p isn't behind the 10p. If my 2p was behind the 10p, you can see the edges of it, and you can see that there's clearly another coin there. What I'm actually doing, my other hand is empty, I've not got the 2p in there at all. I've got the two pence piece on edge between my thumb and my finger, like this, and then the 10 pence piece is in front of that okay like that so i've got the two pen the 10 pence piece out the front the 10 p uh, sorry the 10 pence piece out the front the two pence piece is at the back okay now this way round i'm doing it this way round because the 10 pence piece is slightly smaller than the 2p okay now when i rub all i'm doing i'm doing a couple of things i'm going to push the two coins so I'm, I'm, as i come in my thumb as i rub in front the thumb is going to push the 2p flat against the 10p and then it's going to pit the fingers going to pivot those around as I rub on the front. Okay, so I'm now showing the 2p. The 10p is now behind the 2p but flat. But because the 2p is slightly bigger, you can't see that edge that you would do the other way around. Okay, so from the front, from the front, it looks. <laughs> from the front, it looks like my hand just comes in front and it's going to rub the. Uh, the two, the 10p like this, and it's going to open up again and show that it's empty. And I've got the 2p here behind, so the 10p there behind the two pence piece now. Okay, so that's all I've done. I've shown the 10p at the front, 2p is at the back, 10p is at the front. Okay, my hand comes across in front. I rub with the fingers, and as I'm rubbing with the fingers, in that action of rubbing, I use my thumb to help me out. I'm going to pivot this around. Now you don't want the coins to talk. Talk is when they make it you know, nice together so you want to be nice and careful so you don't do that okay clip them together you want to do it so that you come across and you carefully move that 2p and move it into position you can talk loudly if you like while you're doing it to mask any sort of sound that's going to be there give it a rub and then show the hand empty and it is onto a 2p if you've got a shiny 2p that will probably show up the copper more mine is a well-worn one right now so that's that done to then change it back into the 10 pence piece what you're going to do Hand just goes in front, and all you're doing now is you are just going to flip the coin around. And as you so, I'm talking about another trick that we do. You don't have to flip around at all. You're going to come across, and as you rub this time, you're just going to separate the the two coins, and it, you're just going to pull, give it a rub, and you are going to just pull. You're just taking the the two p with you, okay, like this. But obviously, in real time, you'll be up here, okay. You give it a rub. They're close to you. They can see in real life. Give it a rub. As you rub, you're going to remove that two pence piece. I'm just wondering what Frank's doing. Let it fall just into your fingers of this hand here. Relax this hand as you show the 10p. As you show the 10p, all you've got to do is a, a thing in magic called lapping. 
all right? It's called lapping. It means dropping it into your lap, all right? Now, when I was leaning forward, I couldn't close my legs together on my lap. So I've done the move, rubbed it. I've taken the 2P away. As I come forward to show the 10 pence piece, I did it above the table there so you can see it, okay? What does it say, mum say? Keep dropping it, but dad's managed to do it the first time. Good, excellent mother, well done. So mum keeps dropping it, but dad's managed to do it. Well done, dad, excellent work. Let me know how you guys are getting on as well. So you rub, as you're rubbing, you're stealing that two pence piece. I'm showing you for the purpose of explanation. I'm gonna drop it from here. As I come forward to show you the 10P, I drop the 2P onto my lap, all right? But I just do it as my hand comes to here, I drop it onto my lap as I'm showing this coin forwards, all right? Now my hand can be shown empty afterwards. I show the 10 pence piece and it's just the 10p, show my hands empty altogether. And I can fit it with a pat of line that it was just their imagination that it was a 2p or whatever I want, okay? So this way of concealing one coin behind the other is quite a cool little method, right? And you can actually get away with doing two coins that aren't even close to the same size. If you get that tit at the five pence piece, for example, that I showed you before, now you would think that you're gonna use the, the big coin to hide the little coin. That's not the case. You can actually hide the big coin in your fingers, all right, with the five pence piece can be at the front like this. And you can actually get away with, particularly on camera, if you've got your angles right, showing just the five P, okay? 5p like this your hand looks empty but you actually got the 2p it's just behind in your fingers so you're gripping the 5p like that the 2p the, the 5p itself is hiding the edge of that two pence piece and it looks really fair that you have nothing in your hands and you come across and as you come across you can do the same thing again you're going to turn that two pence piece in front of the five pence piece and show it the only problem there is you can't hold the 5p behind the 2p because it falls out. Um, I've got so much rubbish down here as well, I can't even find the 5p to show you again. So there you go. Um, yeah, you can hide a small coin, what I'm showing you is you can hide a small coin behind a large coin. Oh, sorry, you can hide a large coin behind a smaller coin using that technique. Okay, right. So, on to the next couple of tricks I wanted to show you with a 2p and a 10p, or with two coins. They don't have to be different, they can be the same. Um, this trick is something that's a bit of a knack, uh, a bit knacky, and also, believe it or not, even though the frame rate is quite slow on here, uh, so the frame rate is quite high, um, the frame refresh rate of a camera is how many frames per second it does. That actually works badly for this sort of a trick, because you can see the coin, uh, you might be able to see the, the, the secret bit. So you have a coin in each hand, the idea is you turn your hands over on the desk, okay, move them apart, and then with a bit of luck, this one should slowly disappear, and the coin should jump over to be on this side here, so you have the two coins over this side, all right? Uh, I'll show you from, I wasn't show you from the top, but then my camera's just decided to, to switch off, so we'll do it this way. I'll show you from the top this way. You have the two coins in your hand, okay, the two coins are in your hands, you turn your hand, oh, let me put this here, uh, yeah, it looks like a camera switch are messing me about, two coins in your hands, turn your hands over, okay, and then move them apart, and then this one should disappear, disappears, and it appears over here on this side, okay. Now, um, you'll see it from the front camera, because the camera's, the front camera's a bit better, I mean, I'll have to do it with that this time, because it's not working, um, what you're doing, all you're doing is, as your hands turn over, and you've got to practice this to get it nice and quick. As you turn your hands over, you're literally throwing one coin from one hand to the other, okay? So the coin here, my right hand, the, the 10p, is gonna be thrown across the table as my hands turn over, all right? Now you'll notice, the more astute among you, will notice that they're placed in different positions on my hand, okay? I'll show you. This coin, the 2p, is down towards the base of my hand, okay? It doesn't matter which way around they are. The 10p here is towards the the top edge of my hand so it's towards the base that's towards my fingers and at the top edge that means they go over it's going to get more leverage to fly across right this one here is just going to turn over and come down the table okay now the reason for that is i don't want them talking now you remember i said about the word talking before let me just um i'm going to move that and change that to zoom out a bit hopefully you can see what a mess my cabin is right so um I said about them talking, you don't want them hitting together as you turn your hands over. That's why this one's further forwards. And then as you turn your hands over, that's going to give it more of a flick to jump across and you put your hands down. This one I want to make it disappear like this and say it sort of blends and disappears into the table. And uh, over here, it should join its friend over here. We've got the two over this side. So that just takes a bit of practice. That's a bit of a practicing knack that you've got to get is that. So two coins, 
Place this one near the base of your hand, place this one near this one on my right hand near the fingers, and then as I turn my hands over, I'm just throwing this one across the across to the side. So turn my hands over like this, and you sort of go that time because I've exaggerated it, uh, like this, and then you don't want them to click together. You do the little move and then open it up and it's gone. So from the front, one last time. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make the 2P fly because it's not as shiny. Your, less, your duller coin is the one that you want to, sh to fly because it's going to show up a lot less. Hands like this. Uh, I can't show you. Ah! I've not dropped the 10P. I'm trying to show you where about some of my hands there. Right. There. Okay. And there. All right. Now, so like this. Turn my hands over. Uh, like that. And then slide them apart. Make this disappear. <laughs> Gone. And then it should have jumped up, I should have jumped over, so transferred through the air and is over this side. Okay, so give that a go. Uh, that is another quick little trick for you with coins. Um, and then the final trick was something that I want you to practice a lot, and it's just a vanishing coin trick. Okay, the vanishing coin trick. Um, I'm going to show you a very simple way to vanish a coin. It's not the um, it's not the way I do it most of the time because that's quite a difficult way that I use. Um, the simplest way to vanish a coin is to act like you are making the coin disappear. All right, that's the simplest way to do it. just act like you're making the coin disappear. Here's what it looks like. You show a coin, like a 10 pence piece, place it into my hand, put a bit of blow, and it will disappear. Gone. Okay. Now, all you're doing is you're pretending to place a coin into this hand and you are not, all right? It is, there is no move in this at all. You're just pretending to put the coin in one hand and you are not putting it there. There's no tricky sleight of hand at all. It is exactly what it says on the tin. I am pretending to put the coin from here and pretending to put the coin into my hand and then I'm making it disappear, okay? So my mum says, need a mat like yours on the table so you don't scratch it. Correct, mother. Yes, that is my, this is my close-up mat, my close-up pad. Uh, a new one that I got last week it arrived from TCC which is where I'm really impressed with it because usually closer pads like this are about 90 to 100 quid uh, they put a Kickstarter campaign out I got this one from there and it's basically for my cups and balls routine um, but it's beautiful but if you are doing magic uh, some things I can suggest uh, this is the pad that I've been using uh, up to now in my cabin um, just because it was not made it a bit softer it's basically this is a um, this is a cork pad and it's from Ikea, so it's about four or five quid. I think it's to put like hot stuff on uh, in the kitchen to stop it from burning the, the burning the top. Um, so thanks, Mother. I think it's smart. But yeah, so if you are doing a bit of magic, that's quite good. Um, what I used to use when I couldn't afford uh, close-up mats was a, I used to use a, a mouse mat. Uh, so I used to be able to get mouse mats and I used to use those um, and they do actually sell close-up mats which are is there one in here? I don't think there's one in here to be honest um, which are like a, a baize type uh, close-up mat uh, which can be used as well so they're quite good um, so yeah um, back to my, the, what I was talking to you about the vanishing coin trick you take a coin you place it into your hand and then you make it disappear I'm left dirty here I have a coin in my hand still uh, if you remember the trick we did the other week when we we're talking about um, rubbing it into your elbow and making it disappear you can actually do that with this trick you can place the coin into your hand and you can also you can place the coin uh, into your hand and then you can rub it into your elbow and you will just drop it into your collar like we talked about the other week um, if you don't remember that let me know and I can go through it um, or you can go for the lapping thing again. Show the coin. I'll have a look at this for me. Uh, and it disappears. Okay, it's gone. All right. You can show both hands empty as well because I've just dropped it onto my lap. So place the coin here. Drop it on my lap as I go. Exposed view, so you can see, uh, and it looks like it disappears. This is going to take some practice. It's just you're just practicing as if you're passing the coin from one hand to the other. That's all you're doing. Just pretending to pass it from one hand to the other. There done easy okay but I say easy okay all I'm doing is keep my finger on it keep my thumb on top of the coin pretending to pass it make it disappear it's just in the practice it's in the body movement of making it uh, making it disappear I committed the cardinal sin when I first did this trick for you on here I said I want to pass the coin I want to put the coin in this hand never say that they can see that's what you're doing okay show the coin so you can tell the queen's face and got a tash what you want you to do just blow on there for me I've dropped it on my lap show my hand empty and show this hand empty as well a great way as well, oh, I'm dropping it into my, just fell on my shoe, on my shoe now. A great way to do it as well is to take the coin, say, ask, blow on that for me, blow on there, disappears. This is if you stood up, you're not dropping anything on the floor, it's vanished, I've put it in my back pocket. Okay, it's in here, out of the way. Okay, so yeah, 
practice, practice, practice. What trick did you buy in Plymouth? Ah, yes, I bought. That was actually the idea for this uh, for this trick. Um, uh, well, for the, the the trick I showed you, it was a, a a slightly better version of a copper silver transposition than I showed you. Um, it's called hopping halves, uh, which is I've had a hopping halves for years, uh, but I wanted one that was slightly less tarnished coins, uh, looked a bit nicer, and um, one that shows up nicely on here because I was doing my hopping halves. I would do with two peas and ten peas. Um, the one I upgraded to was one that used a half dollar and a old English penny. So uh, yeah, that's called Hopping Harps. It's a copper silver transposition. So any questions on coin tricks? I want to do some more coin tricks in a couple of weeks. Uh, but those were the three things I wanted to show you. Um, practice that um, that coin vanish. Okay, um, it is a really nice. It looks it looks natural. It's so obvious. It's so simple what you're actually doing. Um, no one ever will ever believe it's a trick. If you're just going to make this disappear, try it uh, when you go to the shop. When you're paying for something in the shop, um, you know, go up to the counter and just pretend to pff, done. Um, coin unique, Mark. Yes, coin unique is a great trick. I, I didn't buy. No, it's not a coin unique. Um, no, it's um, the the routine I did is called hopping halves. So coin unique um, is uh, well, I remember uh, Eddie Gibson used to manufacture like. In the UK now, they all get done from all over the world. By um, well, I'm not going into too much detail about what the actual gimmick is. Um, coin unique was cool. You get a pound and a penny, and you put them. Uh, the, the, the 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 sort of showstopper for coin unique was a pound and a penny would go on the table. You'd put a glass over the top. You'd swirl the glass around, and then uh, the penny would just disappear. And then the spectator could lift the glass up themselves, take the pound that was left underneath there and the pennies just completely gone and vanished um that was the the, the killer trick for coin unique um there are so many others though scotch and soda is it was a similar a similar type trick i bought the first scotch and soda i had i bought that in um ba -ba -ba, florida I bought it in Florida when we went on a holiday when we were four, when I was 14. Uh, I bought it there. Uh, that was Scotch and Soda. That was really cool. That is a different type of trick, but similar in method, uh, shall we say. Um, I wonder if I can show you. I've got that on thingy. Might as well, Anna. Uh, let's have a look. There we go. Let me just get my thing up and I'll show you what scotch and soda is because uh, it's, uh, okay see if it come up uh, no 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 I'm looking for me that's me being being what's it big headed I want to show you my one uh, so basically on here, if I go on to here so you can see it, this is my Matthew J Magic, it's my, if I go on to there, hopefully we should have uh, Gary Trick Tuesday, oh, I was just going to play the first one, no we don't want that, uh, how do I find Scotch and Soda on there? I'll find Hi, it for you. I'll show you another time. Let's I've been a magician yeah, now what's this? This is my first ever to choose. Look at my hair. Look at that. Uh, right. No. If you go to YouTube, uh, go on to my um, channel on YouTube. If you don't, uh, if you're not seeing it, then um, you can go on to Scotch and Soda on there, and you can see me. I'll just come back up there. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I'll find it for you next time and show you that. But yeah, Scotch and Soda was really cool. Uh, it was a similar trick to Coin Unique, but you could do different stuff. Um, yes. Uh, what does Mother say? What are you saying? Was there one in the wooden paddle stick? So that that first, yeah, that that first one is the uh, that first um, what do you call it? Uh, the first trick on there. The first the first video that was up there was the first, was me doing a, a paddle trick with a uh, little gems on it, the gem stick. I can't find that. I don't know where it is. It's one of the first tricks I got. Um, but no, yeah. So sorry, Mark. An answer to your question. Scotch and soda. Uh, sorry, to what you said about coin unique. No, it wasn't. It was hopping halves. Uh, hopping halves is a great trick, um, and I'm yeah, it's a classic of magic is hopping halves. But yeah, you can get varying degrees of um, quality of it, shall we say? 
uh, the one if you'll know actually Mark what I'm talking about and uh, the one I got in Plymouth they're both expanded if that makes sense which is uh, makes it pretty good uh, so yeah uh, and it's called cool a magic shop in Plymouth it's down um, on the Barbican uh, and it's a guy called Mal or Mel Mal Mal I think and uh, yeah I was chatting to him for a good sort of 45 minutes or so uh, really nice guy so uh, oh uh, so Beth knows I do these she never watches them and she's now calling me while I'm midway through what's she doing Right, I'm going to have to go there because that's probably her calling me to tell me she's on the way to cook tea. So, what I will do, I will go to my end screen. I will then hit my little button here so we get our play out music. If anyone got any more questions, what has my mum said there? She has said, one, no, one with two coins. Ah, yes. Was there a wooden paddle with two coins on it? I think there was. Are, are you thinking, you're thinking, of two, you're thinking of twos up the, um, the Australian game, I think, aren't you? Um, no worries, Mark. Thank you for watching. So thanks. For, I think you're thinking of the Australian Frank. Frank. Fra Sorry, Frank's going mad. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that might be Australian. But there is, there are definitely coins with a paddle. There's one in the ah, this is one in the letterbox magic um, boxes. This one is one that I do in there where you show the paddle um, and then you make you actually get them to sign a ten pence piece and you make it disappear and it appears on the uh, on the coin paddle and then you kind of you drop it off um and then um yeah just signed and all that jazz um yeah so there is there is a coin paddle with a with a coin on it yeah there's various various different ones with that as well so yes but thank you mom good good uh, good question good questioning uh, but no, uh, yeah, cheers, Mark. Thanks very much. Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, I will love you and leave you. I will see you uh, next Friday. I need to do my, my magic babble again soon. I've not done one for ages, so I'll do a magic cabin random babble uh, pretty soon. Thanks for watching. Uh, do us a favor, share the page out with people. I'd be much appreciated. Kaylee, oh, thank you. Uh, thanks, Matt, for going. <laughs> Even at the supermarket, yes, give it a go, Kaylee. Uh, at the supermarket, as you're pretending to pass the coin over, just kind of you put it in your hand and go to pass it, and it'll just disappear. And then you, you know, you can then just pretend like it's vanishing. Uh, you can do it in multiple coins as well at the same time. Let's say like, a handful of change, pretend to pass it, and then go. Okay, uh, yes. So, Kaylee, I don't know if your little one will be old enough to try that yet, but give it a go. Give it a go. Okay, right. Love you, leave you guys. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next week. Uh, please do share the pages, all that sort of stuff. That helps me out, and I will see you soon. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.